today, and you may be seated at this time. In these days, we are about two years, a little bit over two years in a pandemic. I tell you, it's so many things going on in this world. And I believe that God is trying to get our attention. Amen. I believe that God wants us to recognize that he is sovereign and he has the whole world in his hands. Amen. And he will do just as he wants to do, but he wants us to trust and believe him. It's time out for saying, I will trust in the Lord until I die. But then when something happens in our life, we refuse to trust him. It's time out for us to stop doubting God, whether or not he's good or not. Look at somebody and say, ain't God good? Ain't God he's good. good whether times are good or bad, whether we're having good times in our lives or if things are going really bad. God is still good. Look at somebody say, God is still good in my good times and in my bad times. It's time out for us to stop isolating ourselves when we're going through difficult times. Because the Bible already tells us we're going to go through difficult times. But some of us, when we go through difficult times, we stop trusting God. We stop coming to church. We, we stop praying. We stop believing that God is going to bring us out. And there are many things today that causes us to fear. Now, I, I want y'all to be a little interactive with me in the beginning of this today. Somebody tell me, and uh, uh, Lamont has a microphone, so I want you to talk. Even though you won't be seen on the camera, you'll be heard on the camera. Tell me some things, young people, young people, or some of you, because this message is for everybody today. Some things that we fear. What are some things? Just hold your hand up, and he's going to bring the mic to you. What are some things that we fear today? What are some things that make us fearful? Hold your hand up so he can bring the mic to you so everybody. Jada? Change. Change. Some people are afraid of change and this pandemic has caused us to have to make a shift. Huh? We won't go back to the way things used to be and our normal is now our new normal. Amen. What else causes us to fear? What causes us to fear? Speak from your heart. Tell the truth. What causes you to fear? The truth. The truth. God, that comes from a young person. The truth that will set us free sometimes causes us to fear. Yes, what else causes us to fear? Our health. I'm sorry? Our health. Our health. When we're faced with sickness. I don't know about you, but when I got COVID, that was very scary for me because at the time, in the beginning when I got COVID, everybody, you were looking on TV and people were dying. Numbers, the numbers every day was just going up and up and up. And I know that people like Melissa, those that work in the hospitals, that was the scariest thing that you had ever seen and never experienced in your life as a nurse to be there and people just dying every day. Not enough room in the hospitals to take care of people, refrigerated trucks uh, coming and holding bodies and not being able to have funerals. What else causes us to fear besides sickness? Racism. Racism. Oh my God. And that came from a man. Uh, my mom said yesterday the black man is an endangered species. And racism a lot caused them. We saw that with George Floyd. We saw that with so many killings that came about um, in our in our uh, land, in our country, when we were all sitting still and were able to pay attention to what was really going on. And racism really showed its ugly head. Somebody else, what causes us to fear? Communication skills. Communication. The lack of being able to communicate with one another. And when we were in COVID, we couldn't even communicate with each other. All right. I, I, I'm, I'm curious to see how these COVID babies come out because all they saw was mess. Y'all know y'all used to say, ooh, go to, go to, go to, go to the baby. And, and now they were on FaceTime or couldn't even see you because of the mask. Yeah, 
Yeah, so uh, not being able to communicate politics. Politics. Who's going to be in office? Because some people that were in office caused us a lot of stress and strife. Amen. That's why we always got to be prayerful for the people. We got to vote. It's not enough to just Amen. sit back and watch the Amen. TV and see who's in office. So many people die for our right to vote. We need to make a difference and go into the polls and vote and put in godly people in office. Amen. Heaven. Fear of lack of finances. Fear of lack of finances, not enough money. And I tell you, I hear about that so much with the rise of inflation. I go to the Walmart and have two bags and spend $100. And ain't got one meal, one good meal in, in the basket. Gas prices high. People, young people just trying to find places to rent and live and people are taking advantage and the prices of homes and to rent is outrageous. Things that cause us to fear. I fear there will be no resources when my grandchildren grow up. No resources. Things will run out. We'll have a lack. People being shot down in the street. People Homes being shot up. People afraid for their lives. People afraid for their lives. I don't think they ever had justice for for Breonna Taylor, and we just heard about uh, 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 Aubrey um, that was shot down in the street, just jogging in the neighborhood, being shot down, and and we we stand, and and this really hurts me. It kills me to hear us talk about Black Lives Matter, but we kill each other. We got to be fearful of our own kind. In the street. There are many things in this life that causes us to fear that you have mentioned. Pandemic, sickness, dying, lack of resources. Somebody in here, they might be young and say, I'm afraid to go back to school. Somebody in here might say, I'm afraid of bullies and being picked on. I'm afraid of trying something new and new opportunities. Somebody might just say, I'm afraid of the dark. But I come to tell you today about somebody that is a fear buster. For God did not give us a spirit of timid, timidity or cowardice or fear, but he has given us a spirit of power and love and sound judgment and personal discipline, abilities that result in a calm, well-balanced mind and self-control. Allow me to speak today on the Holy Spirit, the fear buster. Anybody heard of them? Come on, turn it up a little bit. Some of them here. Any fears? I heard a lot of them. But I came to tell you today about somebody that can get rid of all of those fears, that can ease the, us, our fears and cause us to have sound mind, to have power, and to get through these difficult days where we have fear. The Holy Spirit, the fear buster. All right, now. So, I want you to know today, if you are saying you don't need to fear anything because the Holy Spirit gives you the power to overcome your fears. All right. Allow me again to read the text from 2 Timothy. The first chapter in the seventh verse, and I'm reading from the Amplified Version. For God did not give us a spirit of timidity or cowardice or fear, but he has given us, and th this says a spirit, but his 
spirit of power and of love and of sound judgment and personal discipline. Abilities that result in a calm, well-balanced mind and self-control. So today allow me just a few moments, and this is for everybody, to talk about what you need to activate this power to overcome your fears, this love to have a sound mind and self-control. The first that we need to do to activate this power is to pray. All right. Look at somebody and say, we need to pray. The Bible says we need to pray without ceasing. What does that mean? That means we need to pray all the time for everything. Prayer is communicating with God. And we talked about those of us who were in Sunday school last week, the different types of prayer. We talked about the, the prayers to intercede, interceding on behalf of others. We talked about prayers of petition where we come to God and we're asking God to do something on our behalf, do something for us. And the prayers of thanksgiving, giving God thanks for who he is, what he's done for us. So we need to pray. And I want you to know today there's nothing too big or too small. So many of you gave uh, some fears and some of those fears are really big fears. It's a big fear to not know if you're going to have enough money to take care of you and your family. All right. The lack of resources, not having a job. It, it, it's a big thing when the doctor gives you a bad report and you're sick in your body. Or they give you a terminal ill, they tell you you have a terminal illness. Or you get sick and you're on a ventilator. Those are some big things to fear in this time. But God even cares about young people when you are fearful of a bully. Yes. That's big to you, and so that's big to him. He even cares about when you're fearful of taking a class because it's hard. It's math. I don't like math. I'm not good at math, but I need this class in order to graduate. That might seem small to some, but it's big to you. It's, it's big to our God. God cares about big things and little things. He cares about if you are scared, a uh, little one, of the dark or what might be in your closet or up under your bed. He wants you to pray to him about your fears, about things that bother you. He cares about that because he loves you. God wants us to pray. And I want you to know sometimes we're fearful of talking to God. Because some people think that we have to talk a certain way in order to communicate with God. God just wants you to be yourself. Yes. He just wants you to be you. Sometimes we go to God and pray. You ever been so disturbed in your spirit, in your heart, that you didn't even know what to say? And I thank God that we serve a God that the Holy Spirit intercedes for us. That Jesus intercedes for us. He's sitting on the right hand of the Father. And that even our moans and our groans and our cries, he interprets that. And he understands our hearts. I can remember going through things in life and not knowing what to say at the time. And tears would be rolling down my eyes. And you couldn't call anyone because it's two o'clock, three o'clock, four o'clock in the morning and the only person you have to go to is your Holy Father. Do you know that he cares for you? Amen. You don't have to go through things alone. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege it is to be able to carry things to God in prayer. Who is our friend? And because he's our friend, he cares about us. Our great father is omnipotent. He has all power to answer all prayers. He ain't afraid of your questions. No, he's not. 
Sometimes we think that we can't go to God and, and, and question him about things that are on our heart. Now, let, let, me, let me just tell you, it's a difference between going to God and asking him for things that we don't understand. And there are many things that we go through in life we don't understand. We don't understand why we get sick. We don't understand why we lose our jobs. We don't, we don't, un well, some of us, well, you might understand why you lost your job. I mean, you ain't come to work on time and you ain't do your work. You, well, I ain't talking about that, but I was, I, that just caught me to say, make sure I said that. But, but there are things that we can go through that we don't understand. And, and, and we have to go to God about it. We've been talking a lot about prayer. We talked about prayer last week and praying for those that persecute you and praying for your enemies and people that don't like you and as Christians the Bible says we have to pray for them and not only pray for them this morning they told us we got to bless them That's right. bless. what bless, them. bless people that mistreat me that don't love me back yes we got to bless them with a good prayer and mean it from our hearts. So sometimes we gotta pray, God, you gotta meet me halfway. Cause I just ain't feeling it. Amen. That's being honest with God. He already knows. You might as well be honest with him. He already knows. He's a God that never slumbers and sleeps. He's omnipotent. He's omniscient. He knows everything. He knows our hearts. He knows our minds. He knows what we're going through. He knows what we've been through. And he knows what we're going to go through. And guess what? Guess what? He knows what those that we love are going through. I love that not only he's omnipotent, he's omniscient, he's omnipresent. That I can pray right here. For my children, for my grandchildren that's way in Baltimore, Maryland. That's in Atlanta. And God can go to them. He can be with them. Hallelujah. We praise a God that can handle our questions and fear. What else? What else? What else? In order to activate this power, this love, uh, th to have a sound mind and self-control, we need to read the word of God. That's right. That's right. Huh? So when we pray, we are talking to God. But sometimes we don't wait for the answer. Huh? I like when my dad would say to the teachers, we got to do more than fly over the city. When we're reading and we're studying the word of God, that we got to take time. We got to allow God to speak back to us. And how does he speak back to us? He speaks through his Holy Spirit and he speaks through the word of God. That's why we got to read the word of God. Because in the word of God, he talks back to you. Yes. And you have to listen yes. for his voice. He'll give you the answer. You know why? You know why? Because everything that you need is in the word of God. It's full of the laws and commands that God expects for us. But it's also full of promises and answers. So when you lack and when you don't have any money in your pocket and your bills are due. And you are living from paycheck to paycheck or lack of a paycheck. Then you, you, you need to pick up the word of God and read the word where it tells you. That he clothes the lily of the field. And he cares about the birds that fly in the air. And if he can take care of them, surely, surely he's going to take care of you. And he tells you in the word of God, don't worry. Don't worry. Don't fret. He tells us that over and over. Don't worry. He says, think on good things. Whatever is lovely, whatever is good, whatever is pure, whatever is of good report. He says, think on these things. Whatever you need, it's in the word of God. Yeah, yeah. And guess what? It never changes. Yeah. See, the laws change. Some of us, we want to live by man's laws. And that's okay because you got to live by man's laws if you don't want to go to jail. But you got to make sure that they align with the word of God. They got to align with the word of God. There are some things that man come up with that God did not say in, the, in his word. 
So we got to read his word because there are promises in there. He promised to take care of you. Yes. Jeremiah 29 and 11 says, I know the plans I have for you, young people. You're trying to figure out what career you're going to have since you were little. You was, I know what I want to be when I grow up. I want to be a policeman. I want to be a fireman. I want to be, but you got to ask God, what is it that he has for you to be? And guess what? God is so good and he's so great. He's already put inside of you everything that you need to be what he has destined you to be. Sometimes we're not good at that job because we're out of place. We're not doing what God has told us to do. We might have chosen this career because it pay a lot of money. But God said, you need to be a nurse. You need to take care of people. I already put it inside of you to care about people. You need to be a teacher. I've already given you the gift to, to teach and instruct others. So we need to make sure that what we want to be aligns with the word of God. And he tells us that I know the plans I have for you. Plans for you to prosper and to have a good future. He has the answer. Some of us are confused. We don't know which way to turn. We don't know what to believe. And as you get older, you're going to have people challenge what you believe. Yeah. Challenge what your mama and your daddy taught you. Challenge you yeah. what this word of God says. Yeah. But you got to always go back to the word of God. Yeah. It's going to give you the answer. You're trying to figure out why you have no peace. But, but you serving other gods? You trying to find peace in Buddha? You, 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 you trying to find peace in other gods and, and men that walk on this earth? But, but in the word of God, it, it, it tells us that Jesus is the answer. Yeah. So when you're confused, you don't know what to do, pick up the word of God. All right. For the answer, we're talking about how to uh, bust our fears, how the Holy Spirit helps us. So we, we got to pray, we got to read the word, and then guess what? It's not just enough to read the word. It's not just enough to come and hear the word of God or, or being uh, preached or spoken. You got to do it. That's right. Amen. Amen. Yep, yep, Nike had it right. He, they said, just do it. Just do it. Just do it. Look at somebody and say, just do it. Just do it. Just do what it says. It says, thou shalt not kill. That's what he means. Don't kill nobody. That's right. Hmm? He says, thou shalt not steal. It don't matter if it's at your mama's pocketbook. It don't matter if it's the cookie in the cookie jar. Or it's a bank. He says, thou shalt not steal. If it ain't yours, you can't take it. That's right. Huh? If that ain't your wife, you can't have it. Oh, wow. oh this is a kid's message. Okay, pass it out. He meant what he said when he said, that shall not steal. He, he meant what he said when he said, that shall not have no other God before me. You can't just hear that, but then you worship your cars on Sunday. You watching your car instead of coming to church. That you worship, you worship, you worship other things. You put other things before God. You put you put the things that you love, the things you want to do. I, 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 I tell you, uh, Pastor, I, I just be real confused that people don't come back to church. And it ain't just a heaven girl problem, it's just all over. People don't come back to church not doing for God, not giving. They claim they be on, on, on worship online, but they ain't even on worship online. They uh, got the pillow and in the bed. And they say they fearful, they scared, they scared, don't want to come back, but they doing everything else they want to do. They go to Walmart, they go to concerts, they go on cruise ships. We give excuses. Word, word. Amen. We talking about how to activate your power. How to have self-discipline, have a sound mind. We 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 we're talking about how 
how to get rid of our fears and to have this power and the Holy Spirit. So we got to not just hear the word, but we got to be obedient and we got to live holy. All right. That's right. Yeah. We can't straddle the fence. Uh, we can't be lukewarm. Anybody like lukewarm coffee? Uh, you either need to be hot or cold. Either put some ice in it or steam it up. <laughs> but we can't be lukewarm. We got to be obedient and live holy. Stop, stop trying to change the word of God to meet your lifestyle. You want to live how you want. You want to do what you want to do. Don't judge me. Instead of changing your life styles to fit the word of God when he says live holy. Hmm? Live according to the word and not to your flesh. Flesh gets you in a lot of trouble. Because I just want to do what I want to do because I want to do it because it feels good. It feel right. Make me happy. I just go and eat that ice cream and some cake and some cookies. No, it ain't good for me because I just want it. It tastes good. It look good. <laughs> Just want to be with them. Mama said be in. By midnight. midnight. <laughs> I believe if the Lord takes ahead some little kids these days, she'll still tell them to be in by midnight. She don't care nothing about the time change. <laughs> Y'all be trying to negotiate to one o'clock, two o'clock. Mama said ain't nothing going on that late. By midnight you need to be in the house. But because of your flesh, you out in the wee hours in the morning just doing what you want to do, hanging with you, what, what, who you want to hang with, and that stuff ain't good. The devil knows your dreams. He knows the things that God has for you too. And he's out to kill and destroy you. And to keep you from reaching your dreams and doing what God has called you to do. You got to live according to your flesh and your feelings. Sometimes we don't feel like doing some stuff. Yeah. I, I don't feel like going to church today, mama. <laughs> that ain't the Lord's anchor you talking to. <laughs> you know, I know these new mamas might negotiate and say, okay, you know, like it. They'll tell them they got to get up and go to school, but they give them a choice about going to church. Probably because they don't feel like getting up and going themselves. But we got to press our way. Sometimes we don't feel like doing some stuff that is right, but we got to do it. We got to press our way. Amen. So, in order to activate, this power of love and to have a sound mind and self-control. We got to pray. We got to read the word of God. We got to be obedient. We got to live holy. Don't just be hearers. We got to do it. Live according to the word of God, not our flesh and our feelings. Let's, come here, Peter. 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 He was in a boat. God sent the disciples out. They just ministered to people and he sent them out ahead of him to go over to the other side. And Peter was in the boat. And when Jesus uh, went out on the water, was walking on the water towards the boat, those that were in the boat were afraid. Mm -hmm. Don't talk about it. You know, y'all would have been afraid too. You out in the water, ain't that right, Deacon Bean fishing? In the wee hours, and you see this vision coming towards you, looks like a man. 
He said, I ain't even going out there tonight. And he's walking towards them. And Jesus tells them not to be afraid. It is him. And Peter says, Lord, if it's you, tell me to come. And Peter steps out of the boat. Huh? Yeah. The boat represents comfort and safety. Sometimes we're fearful of things that we don't know about. And we want to stay in the boat. But God has told us to step out. Trust me. I'm here. Get out the boat. Get out the boat. And so Peter sees the Lord and he steps out the boat. And guess what? Miracle happens. Yeah. Sometimes when you step out and you're obedient, you do what God tells you to do. That's when your miracle's going to come. You've been waiting. You've been praying for him to say yes. You've been praying for that miracle for him to answer your prayer. But you got to step out the boat. You got to step out your comfort zone. You got to do things that make you uncomfortable and make you a little scared. Go ahead and do it scared. And when he stepped out the boat, he was able to walk on water. Walk on water. A miracle. But then guess what happened? The wind started blowing. The storm started raging. The waves started rocking. And he took his eyes off the Lord. Sometimes we're tested by things that try to distract us from what God has for us. But we got to stay focused. We got to look to the hills for what's coming to our help. God has his hands that are stretched forth towards you. You got to reach for his hands and you got to keep on walking. You got to keep on moving. You got to keep on pressing your way. I don't care how much the wind is blowing. I don't care how much the storms are coming and the waves are shaking. You got to stay focused. Amen. Uh huh. Cause your miracle is over there. Your, your blessing is on the other side. What God has for you is on the other side. You got to stay focused and get out the boat. Keep your eyes on the Lord and don't be distracted. When he got distracted, he took his eyes off Christ and he began to sink. Yes. 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 Somebody say, I'm sinking today. I'm sinking in my situation. I'm sinking. I'm sinking. I'm sinking. I'm sinking. I don't have enough money, Lord. Do you see me? Do you see me? Do you hear me, Lord? Do you realize I don't have enough money to pay my bills? I don't I don't know how I'm going to make it, Lord. I don't know how I'm going to have food to eat. I don't know how I'm going to have clothes on my back. God, I'm sinking. I'm sinking. I'm sinking. I'm sick in my body. The doctors have given me a bad report. I'm sinking. And he says, stay focused. Stay focused. Stay focused. Stay focused. Stay focused. Yes, I know it's hard, but stay focused. I know what it looks like, but stay focused. Keep your eyes on God. And Peter had sense enough to cry out to the Lord to save him. That's what we got to do. God is always. He always stood by my side. He has always been my guide. When my friends walk away and turn back on me, he stood right by. No matter what you're going through, he's always there. He wants you to keep your eyes on him. If you are living in a life of fear, then you need to call out to God. Because you're taking your eyes off. Huh? You ain't activa activating your power. You got to go to him. You got to go on your knees and call out. 
to Jesus, your Savior. You got to call out to Jesus, your way maker. You got to call out to Jesus, your promise keeper. You got to call out to Jesus, your miracle worker, your burden bearer, your heaven no sharer, your doctor in the sick room, your judge in the courtroom.
this next call, you may be saved, but you need a church home. That's important. Yeah. Some of us, for the last two or three uh, years, we've been online, we've been on a pandemic, and you haven't been under the covering of a pastor. That's important. You need to you need to be covered under a pastor, and you need to be in the fellowship. The Bible says, "Forsake not the fellowship." Of us coming together. Because why? 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 We get strength for one another. We're able to build each other up. And, and encourage one another. To keep on keeping on. Some of us are, 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 are out there. We out there. We out there. We out of the boat. And we're sinking. Or we in the boat. And we just trying to stay there and hide. Because whatever you're doing. And wherever you are. You find safety. But you need to come. You need to come. You need to find a church home. You need to find a pastor that's going to pray over you and love on you and look after you, after your spiritual being, after, after help you to grow spiritually in this time. And if that's you, if that's you, if that's you, I want you to come. I need the oil.